Aloha. This show is Politics for the People, and I'm your host, Stephanie Stahl Dalton. We are going to be discussing a topic uh, about uh, the campaign today, given the waning interest of the GOP in the big lie single issue campaign talk. And on the other hand, increasing democratic energy, given the likelihood of an indictment by the DOJ uh, of our former president for um, obstruction of justice. So we uh, have a panel of participants to discuss this issue and those associated with it. And they are Jay Fidel and also Tim Apatello. So welcome panel. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we are going to begin right away with Jay talking to us about um, the construction that works right now or has been working so far, which is, of course, that the the ex-president is the leader of the GOP now, the the, uh, reputed leader of the GOP, according to the reports in the news. Now, is this strengthening? Or is, is, are the GOP voters thinking to move on? And um, would this be about threatening his stardom or Trump stardom as the leader and potential nominee for the 2024 presidential nomination of the Republican Party? Search me. Uh, I haven't really seen anything that suggests that the, the GOP base is... Uh, disintegrating under Trump and they don't believe him anymore. They they shouldn't believe him, okay? It's logical. It's a, it's not inductive. It's a logical thing where you you say, well, if I were a GOP member of the base, I, I watched this stuff happening. I couldn't possibly believe it. And he has to be declining from where I am, from if I make myself into a member of the base. But I I don't know if there's been anything material in the in the in the press. Maybe you guys know more. Um, to suggest that his base is leaving him. Um, logically, he's in more trouble uh, domestically. Um, and logically, he's made some stupid remarks about, um, about um, Vladimir Putin in Russia. And, and I call him Putin now, by the way. And that's not an error. That's, that's what I call him. I did uh, that. Yeah, yeah, you noticed that. Um, so, I mean, it's only logical, but it's not based on any evidence that I know. So that's my answer to your question. I, I'm not sure that you can make an assumption on either end of that. All you can do is say that if you were a member of the base, you would not be impressed. Well, I was uh, quoting um, the latest report that that I've had on that topic, which is his leadership in the party is is uh, substantial. But uh, George, the husband of Kelly Ann, his um, high level advisor in the White House, uh, Trump's high level advisor in the White House, her husband maintains that the GOP is moving on, wants to move on, and that this single issue topic for the campaign is is weakening and over in my next life i would like to be the marriage counselor between george and kellyanne um, they have some real issues there it's a, it's not a statement of a great marriage i can't imagine what their pillow talk is like in any event <clears throat> let me say that uh, i don't believe kellyanne and i don't believe george either so it's not really much authority for either one of them to say anything would you agree with the other side of the topic, which is the, uh, the interest and in the uh, increased energy of the Dems, the Democrats, in thinking that the Department of Justice may be moving forward, given that recent federal judge's ruling on the culpability and potential felony accusation or, or uh, indictment of, uh, of the former president? Well, through, and through the magic of Zoom, I can see Tim shaking his head no. And, and, and I shake my head no, too. Um, in fact, it works exactly the other way around. So uh, this judge who is uh, getting, um, you know, uh, evidence uh, and uh, pleadings from the Department of Justice, some lawyer in the Department of Justice is saying, gee, that's enough for me to conclude that uh, Trump has, um, you know, has violated the law and is a felon. Um, because of what happened on January 6th or around January 6th. But, you know, if it comes from the Department of Justice, don't you think 
that the Department of Justice should be doing something. In January this year, um, Merrick Garland made, I guess it was in the, the proceedings remembering a year ago, you know, uh, Merrick Garland made a remark that he was investigating and he would investigate it wherever the evidence took him, end quote. Um, but you know what? I, I wasn't convinced of that. I thought he was saying that because somebody was pressuring him to say something because he has said nothing for the past year. And I would conclude, just as an ordinary citizen, that he has done nothing for the past year. Nothing. Uh, I think he's AWOL. Uh, he's AWOL on, on the big guys and the, and, the, and the little fish, too. He hasn't really been doing his job on January on the January 6th uh, insurrection. And it's really too bad, because the public needs to hear from him. Democracy needs to hear from him. We have to believe in our government. And with that, with that uh, attorney general, it's really hard to believe in your government. So the, the New York Times uh, reports the 34-page decision by that judge a few days ago, and so the judge finds that it's very likely that Trump, you know, violated the law and is a felon. Very likely. Okay. So a couple of days later, uh, maybe one day later, America Garland gets up and says, "No, no, we really are doing something." And I'm saying, would he have said that uh, if the New York Times had not had that article? Interesting how. The media is doing more investigation than he is. And the media is, you know, is is like motivating him to respond to statements of investigation of what the media has found in its investigation. I think it's a sad sack situation. And I think that there's no excuse for Merrick Garland to be behind the curve this way. There's no excuse for him to be silent. It is shades of, uh, of uh, Robert Mueller, you know, with a sort of magic... Um, um, you know, uh, the emperor wearing no clothes. We're all supposed to believe that something's happening, but there's no evidence that anything's happening. Uh, so, you know, uh, frankly, um, I, am, I am not convinced that either A, Robert Mueller's doing anything, or B, this new energy in the Democratic Party. I think right-thinking members of the Democratic Party are going to wonder all the more, what is going on here? How come we can't investigate an obvious um, if a coup in our country? Thank you. Tim, let me come to you for some follow-up um, that might help us here understand better what's going on. Not that anybody really knows, but we can speculate. Oh, we, we, yeah. Here at Think Tech, we know. Oh, and we, we do know a lot. We do. <laughs> but I, with Jay's comment about no excuse, of course, but would you take us back to Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump um, and the Department of Justice's approach to their investigations at that time. If you recall, there was quite a hullabaloo about why Hillary's uh, investigation was announced and then that the, the Donald Trump investigation was never announced. And she blames that for or believes that that may have been the, the basis of her loss. Um, of course, that's- Oh, it certainly, certainly was a- the final, you know, dagger in the back. Sure, it was. Yeah. No two ways about so, it. So, what does that tell us about the policy of the DOJ? So, d d can can you? Well, talk it comes down. And Jay's right. It comes down to an individual. We've got milk toast in the in the seat of the Attorney General's office, the United States Attorney General's office. He's milk toast, and I don't know if he's waiting for the Select Committee's report and have them do all his work for him. I, I don't know if it's a matter of complacency, being lazy or just not knowing what his job is. Um, but Jay's right. It's, he was prompted to say something only after the publication came out. And so what's holding him back? Is he waiting for headlines? I, I don't know. Uh, I did hear yesterday that they're expanding uh, their scope of investigation. Um, I understand that they don't want to talk about their investigation, but give us some highlights you know let let the president at least know what's going on um you know maybe the the american public doesn't deserve to know the details but um it's it's it, you know, it's ridiculous and, and and you're right i mean hillary clinton uh basically was the last dagger was the the announcement by james comey and that that was it that was that casted a doubt on people and they said oh i can't vote for her yeah. All right. I um... let's talk about uh, Joe Biden, though. You know, in in the case of Trump, Trump was telling uh, Bill Barr what to do, right? 
Yeah. He was telling him, he was telling him how to put his trousers. But that was on. wrong, Jay. It was wrong. It was wrong. It was wrong. Okay. Well, that was, was absolutely was against the policy. And Bill Barr was, uh, you know, was listening to Trump and doing everything Trump told him to do. He, he, he saw himself as representing Trump, as okay. counsel for Trump, not the country. That okay. is hideous, and it's very destructive for our democracy. It is a completely wrong way, Corrigan. It amazes me how these guys who went to law school and, you know, presumably understand the way the country works, don't. They don't understand the way the country works. And, and Bill Barr didn't. We can never, ever forgive him for the things he did. Never. Now, I think Bill, uh, rather, Joe Biden is taking a page, um, at the reverse page out of that book and say, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to tell the AG what to do. I'm not going to, you know, muscle the Department of Justice the way Trump did, but he's carrying it too far. But he, first of all, he appointed a milk toast attorney general. Um, you know, uh, Merrick Garland might have been a good judge. Maybe I really haven't followed him. Uh, everybody thought he was, you know, a great guy when his uh, nomination came up. But you know, that's that's the way. You know, everybody run to the left side of the boat, run to the right side of the boat. <laughs> they thought but, that Amy Barrett was a good, you know, possibility well, too. The, the problem is, the, the problem is that we have an attorney general who's not doing anything. And Joe Biden is not saying boo about it. Now, really? if, if I were Joe Biden, or better yet, Stephanie, I think we need a woman president. If you were Joe Biden, you know, you would get on the phone and you would say, hey, come on, Merrick. You know, we well, need something from you, Merrick. What's wrong with you? you well, the call would talk, have been Merrick. made long ago. But I understood. I, I, I'm, I'm glad we're kind of revealing what, what's going on with these, these, these people in charge making decisions about how to implement the DOJ policy. Because my understanding was that those investigations were undercover until the very uh until they're ready to charge so that's why it was so yeah the emperor's new clothes and we all sit around for years while the country is deteriorating well waiting for these guys and when they finally come back it's a nothing burger there's a nothing burger well all right i i thank you for that clarification and that may be the case on and i do think we need to keep in mind that obama had to select someone like a Merrick garland to to counter some of what he was trying to move through with the opposition to his nomination just like lindsey graham is making the point about this current uh nominee that she she was not the best choice uh uh or, or a better well, it's choice not just, it's completely different though i don't I, a this, is, a, this is an outstanding right. nominee Right. Uh, but I, I think Joe Biden well, is, it, is. I think Joe Biden is chicken about this. Uh, I think. I think he he probably not nominated the wrong person uh, for the AG's job. Um, you know, who did not have experience as a prosecutor, for example. Um, and uh, and then now for the past uh, sixteen months, uh, he hasn't really done anything to motivate him. All of the, this uh, sort of sanctimonious thing about oh, I'm not going to tell him what to do. Just tell him to speak. Just, just tell him to give us some confidence. And if, and if you don't want to tell him, then you do it. But yeah. the public is thinking this guy is a wall. Well, you know, let's move over to Tim. Let me. A, I'd like uh, to add on to that. I, well, not Tim, only is he a wall, but it tells the American public that maybe you can commit crimes against our democracy and maybe get away with it. You bet. And that's worse. The rule of law is not. Uh, applying to well, he's got it. What is the primary duty of the Department of Justice? It's justice. Well, the primary duty is to is to protect the democracy. Uh, William Barr never did that one day in office, mm -hmm. and frankly, the guy before him who was appointed by Trump never did it either. Mm -hmm. Jeff Sessions, mm -hmm. um, you know. But but the reality is that Merrick Garland's not doing it either. We have a crisis in our democracy, and he doesn't see it as a crisis. No. Let me Very tell you, if the three of us were involved, um, you know, we would be we would be moving. Take care thing. of business. You yeah. know, the thing is, the FBI has a lot of power to gain information, maybe as much or more than a select committee does. The select, select committee is all stuck in bureaucracy. They have to go through all this process. The FBI doesn't. And and so you'd think the FBI be way ahead of, of the select committee. They well, could have started hey, earlier. Hey, how and could they, they do that? What, who would unleash the FBI to take a look at this? The it, attorney general. I mean, he could call them on. OK, absolutely. Totally. Uh, uh huh. Well, he, he could at least do that if he wants to save himself the energy. Uh, okay. And the problem is that Biden can't get rid of him. 
you know, if you or I or, or Tim were attorney, rather president, we'd have to entertain the thought that this isn't working really well. And if you have to evaluate how we're doing in responding to the insurrection, insurrection the weak link here is Merrick Garland. I'll go on record. And, and so what do you do about that? Well, one option, which is not, not very appealing, is to get rid of him. Say, look, I'd like you to resign. You're not doing anything. Uh, we well, don't you think this that this way. might, might the be? The problem is that if he resigns, uh, then Joe Biden has to find someone else. And let me tell you, you know, what will happen in the Senate over confirming the someone else. It will be something to watch. It'll, it'll make Katanji look easy. Uh, of course, of it, course. So anyway, that's let's, yeah. Let's move. Let's, let's move on them. to another aspect of all of this, um, Tim. Um, it appears that Pence has a new agenda as he attempts to re rehabilitate himself. Do you think that he has the traction um, or the grit or the capacity to proceed from his sycophancy? under Trump and his cooperation with him on everything to uh, becoming more uh, outspoken uh, about what, what he did and what he thinks his accomplishments were and also to become a policymaker such as he's saying he wants the military to be stronger and to be more powerful. What do you think is going two on? Points. Um, two points, one is a little too little too late. He had a chance to be a vice president and speak up for democracy while he was vice president. Uh, I'm glad he, he didn't, you know, he followed through with the vote for uh, electoral college confirmation. Uh, he did something right. But um, no, he's been a total boot licking lackey for Donald Trump um, since day one. So and then second part is he's got the charisma of Merrick Garland, uh, milk toast uh, squared. So, you know, if he has uh, dreams about being a nominee for President of the United States, first he should begin with Donald Trump to see if Donald Trump allow him to even put his name on the ballot, but he won't be allowed. Uh, you know, that's, you know, that's Mike Pence. I, I, you know, to go to the title of the show, I, I think Donald Trump is losing traction mainly because the American public in the last 20, 25 years, the attention span of the average American has, has shortened. We don't have the attention span anymore because our technology is so much faster that we're required to spend our attention on multiple things than we were back in the 70s, 60s, and even part of the 80s. Um, now we just, you know, it's the next news cycle is probably about 12 hours, maybe 24 hours. And so I think Donald Trump has been out of office now for well over a year. And the, the bromance, the love affair is waning. And also I think they're getting tired of a one trick pony. I, the election was stolen from me. The election was stolen from me. And then secondly to that is um, the snuggling up to Putin. Uh, if, if Putin doesn't look like a very nice guy and he looks like a war criminal, support for Putin kind of looks like you're an American. And I don't think anyone likes that label. And I think that when you say I'm for Trump, it's almost saying I'm not really American. I'm un-American. Um, he's tried to... Uh, compromise of free and fair election, tried to bury our democracy, and now he's uh, falling in the footsteps of uh, Comrade Putin. And uh, those are two things that most Americans, especially from the, the, the Midwest, uh, don't kind of want to side with. So I think his numbers will slip even more. You got Thank any evidence on you. that? Uh, Jay, my, uh, Jay. If, if, yeah. What evidence? The, uh, well, I uh, wanted- well, it's, it's what I said before. Um, okay. Logically, if you make yourself a member of the base, you come to those conclusions. The passage of time, uh, and that he's not on Twitter and all, and all that, uh, and, and the re stupid remarks he's made about, about Putin. Um, but, you know, is there any evidence that the base is shrinking? Is there any evidence? That, uh, you see articles? Do you see people speaking out on the subject? I don't. Well, yes, there there is some some evidence, um, and that's uh, one of the reasons I brought up the uh, 
I mean, but the topic is because that he's slipping considerably um, in the states where he has recommended, where Trump, uh, the ex-president, has uh, s- s- sided with, supported, approved, promoted the candidates for um, for governor and for secretary of state. So they're not they're not busting through. They're actually falling behind. And also, the interest in these topics is also waning, and and lower. Uh, the polls show lower lower counts for for these. Um, uh, Trump topics and for Trump candidates. So there's yeah, some. And I have some qualitative evidence, and that's just, you know, the people I talk to, they're, you know, steadfast Trump supporters. Um, they're now saying, and I quote, let's put Trump aside for this conversation. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Because yeah. one, they don't want to be labeled as un American. And two, they're kind of tired of hearing about the one trick pony uh, topic, which is the election was stolen. They're sick okay. of it. Does this well, we've give got you it. confidence it is about the election this fall? Does it give you confidence about the election in 2024? It gives me confidence that the Democrats, if they really apply themselves and quit tripping over their own feet, can actually be a competitor in this in this 2022 um, election. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> Democrats don't know how to win. Exactly. And t- and Jay, back to you um, on on uh, where we go uh, about this uh romance with uh, with P- Putin that our ex-president has. Um, it appears also that Pence is interested in returning the GOP to the more traditional anti-Russian stance. So there, there has been some write, write-ups about and reports about th- this is what his goal is. So I mean, you've already you know, put down his intention to um, become, a, get out from under his sycophancy and affiliation totally with Donald Trump, but he seems to be moving to do that. And also to bring the party, I mean, he's got major huge goals in his rehabilitation plan, according to the, the, the articles that I've been reading. So do you see that he's got a winner if print Pence has a winner with some of the public on trying to move towards a, a traditional stance vis-a-vis Russia. No, Pence is a non-person. He's not a player. He's not on the stage. He's a, he's a what's the word? He's of no consequence right now. He, you don't he think ne- he never it. had much consequence, as Tim said, and he certainly didn't gain any consequence by entertaining the possibility of participating in the coup. He okay, made, he, so made this... This, he made this choice after talking to all these people. It was not in a direct aid. It was not because he had uh, any great sense of democracy. It was because they they appealed to him on some um, you know political basis. But mm-hmm. the fact is, the fact is he's weak. Uh, if he doesn't have a moral compass, he hung around with Trump and was a sycophant for Trump for, for four years. And he is is not he is of no consequence now. He will be of no consequence in the election this fall or in 2024. His political career is over. So he cannot convert. OK, um, Tim, that is, um, I think, what we've been heading towards hearing in the discussion um, that he isn't going to re- resurrect himself at all, um, even in the Midwest, where he was a state governor. I agree. Good OK. Day. Okay, good. Well, let me ask you this question. What will, what will be this country's stance or, and in the world if the US DOG does not, or whoever can um, charge him, what if we do not charge Trump? And, and what if we do not prosecute him? What, where will the US Well, do? I can see some possible outcomes. They're, they're not as optimistic as a, an indictment. But um, regardless, you're going to see some candidate, and I don't know who it is, but as we get closer to 2024, you're going to see some candidate take that report from the January 6th Select Committee, take that report and say, here's my brief. I, I'm going to uh, impose the 14th Amendment, paragraph three, that Donald Trump is not qualified to run for president of the United States, and here's my proof. Read it. Enjoy it because it's all laid out for me by the select committee. Uh, I think that'll be a possible outcome if the DOJ does nothing. Um, I also think that um, you'll see the dribble and drabs of reports. Once the DOJ does come up with something, you'll get that and people will start to say, 
gosh, I guess he really did try a coup d'etat against the democracy of the United States. And there'll be those uh, independents, there'll be those old-fashioned uh, Republicans that kind of nod their head about Trump, but then secretly they were nodding their head no. You'll see them actually be a little more bold and a little more strident about their opposition to Donald Trump as the party nominee. And Donald Trump may not be the party nominee. It depends on the timing. Again, if, if the select committee drags its feet and goes much beyond May, uh, this is going to get lost in the summer months. And as we said yesterday in the program, I think Cynthia said it, it's too close to the election. We can't talk about it. Uh, it's not fair for the voters. So this thing has to be done now and as soon as possible. And then the DOJ, I agree with, with Jay, is that Merrick Garland, if you have something up your sleeve, let's see it. Because uh, times are wasting and it's almost, it's almost May. Uh, thank you. That time's a wasting is certainly um, related to the next question. Jay, for you, if the Democrats lose, not only are we out of time almost in this in this um, congressional section, but what, what about if the Democrats lose? Where's all of this work going, Jay? Yeah. Um, so I, bottom line, I think we can all agree that the Republicans have been busy, busy bees. Uh, while we're fooling in Afghanistan and while we're fooling in uh, Ukraine and all, all these other issues come up, including COVID, um, they've been busy, busy bees uh, even after Trump left office. And they've been, um, you know, working together for the, this most outrageous array of uh, anti-democratic bills um, in so many states, in battleground states. So I, I'm not optimistic at all about how this election is going to go. Uh, you can say that, um, you know, that although um, it's, it really is too late for Merrick Garland uh, to get an indictment, uh, to, um, you know, take that to, to court, get a jury impaneled, uh, have a trial, um, prosecute Trump. That's not going to happen between now and uh, October. Um, not going to happen, I'm promising you. And then, of course, Trump is going to appeal everything. So it's not going to be settled. So if you're relying on either the select committee uh, or worse, uh, Merrick Garland, to have a clear cut result uh, demonstrating that from a legal point of view, Trump is a felon, you're not going to get it before the election. It, on the other hand, our democracy has changed. There's nothing so constant as change. And the fact is, there's a whole new generation of kids that have come up in the past five, five and a half years now. They are not the same as the ones who elected Trump in the first place. Um, they are not the same who, of the, as the ones who supported him and, and let him do his Michigas uh, for a good part of his term. Let him get away with all that stuff. Yeah. This is a new generation that may hold him to account, but it's holding him to account in the court of public opinion. Because that's all we got left of our democracy right now. We don't have the rule of law. We don't have a Supreme Court that's going to enforce the rule of law, I'm sorry to tell you. So this is not a good recipe going forward. Uh, and, and I call it the, the, the Keynesian question. You know, what happens in the world of Christmas future? Uh, what happens on the, the bad side of things if you make all the bad assumptions, which I think in large part we can make? Um, so let's assume that Democrats lose because they can't get it together. The Republicans are working like busy bees to try to command that election, both of those elections. So, A, we're going to have a lot of Republicans running the country and the state legislators. Uh, Congress is going to change its complexion. It's going to be eh, it's, it's going to be to the right. And um, and um, it's going to be a sad story because they're not going to they're not going to adopt legislation that is consistent with the interests of the country. Um, and they're going to hamper the president, whoever it is, even assuming the president is a Democrat. Uh, and the result will be that our Democrat, uh, Democratic government will be in even greater jeopardy because of that. Trump has set things in motion for a kind of a slow moving coup. And that's not going away anytime soon. I am not optimistic. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, have a last round here as we're out of time. And so, Tim, perhaps uh, you're. Um, interested in, in resp responding to Jay's points. Are, are, are we at that point on the continuum? Well, I, I would like to respond because since Jay um, resurrected the spirit of Christmas future, uh, <laughs> I'm reminded what 
Ebenezer Scrooge said to the ghost of Christmas future, and that was, are these the things that may be or will be? And if the Democrats get their collective act together, we could say maybe. And uh, second point is, I'd like to think that Donald Trump has lost his luster. No one wants to be labeled as an anti-American. And after January 6th, you, if you're with Trump, you are not only uh, anti-American because um, he tried to overthrow a, a, our election and our democratic process, but now he is in the camp of, of, of Putin. Those are two big strikes. Uh, no American wants to be labeled as, as someone who's in lockstep with, uh, you know, with Putin. And you can't extract Trump away from that. As much as some of the diehard Trump followers will try to do, uh, the foil is for Democrats to say, well, you know, you are judged by those company you keep. And if Donald Trump's your guy, then you're one of them too. And I guarantee you, like a cockroach, they'll scatter. They won't yeah. like that. Yeah, thank you. Jay, um, to finish was off- that, Was that definitive? I, I'm not sure. I, I think like, you got there. I'm milk toast about my statements. Right. I, I was going to ask uh, uh, Jay to, 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 to say whether he believed uh, that people could be, it's almost unimaginable that there could be a majority of anti-Trump. What do you, Jay, do you see it going that way as Tim suggests? That, that, that he will be well, seen. I didn't say majority. <laughs> Let's make that well, clear. I mean, well, that's no. the only way it's going to make any difference. Well, I mean, no, that... you're assuming we're going to have free and fair elections. Don't assume that. We have all these people who are trying to make it just the other way around. They're electing secretaries of state who are, you know, instruments of the of the GOP and just like Trump wanted. So, uh, I mean, I, I think our democracy and our democracy is, is expressed most clearly at election time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was in, in great, great jeopardy. The other thing I want to add is this, <clears throat> you know, I, I sent you guys or did I actually I posted in our in our newsletter today about an article about this guy. Uh, I want to say Richard Koch uh, runs Koch Industries and one of his uh, very, very rich man and has given money to the GOP and to um, Trump for years. Um, and he's really part of the group that has built the GOP into this right wing organization, which is what it is today. And um, it, one of the things that he runs is a greeting card company. And, and so there are greeting cards you can buy from his company. And one of them is a greeting card to Vladimir Putin. And it's entitled something like um, stand in there, stay in there, man. Uh, keep going, Vladimir. What? You know, this is a, a very significant political guy who has enormous amounts of money, who we buy consumer goods from every day, and he is sending selling greeting cards to the base um, to stroke Putin and say, stand in there, man, we're with you, we're with you. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm getting at is there's a lot of people in this country who are suggestible. And a lot of people in the world who are suggestible, you know, look at look at India. India has got its policy of non-alignment and it doesn't want to vote against Russia in, in anywhere in the United Nations. Mm -hmm. um, half of Africa is like that. A lot of South America is like that. And and they know the atrocities that are going on, but they still support Putin. Mm -hmm. So what I'm what I'm what I'm, I just want to point out as the last point here in our round robin. Thank is you. that it's not a matter of whether you support Putin or you don't support Putin for a lot of people in this country. And the GOP, I think, is tending, and this is, again, you know, it's, it's logical but not inductive. Um, the GOP is tending in this direction uh, that Trump and this guy Koch would, would send us in. So Putin ain't that bad. He has, he has reasons for doing what he's doing. And maybe it's okay. And maybe we can forgive him the atrocities. In other words, it's not black or white. You know, it's like the way you were talking, Tim, about how, how you know, Trump ain't that bad. Uh, let's move on. Uh, let's, let's find someone else uh, who can, you know, come down with some sort of middle ground, a uh, gray area, where we, we don't have to send him to jail and you know, try him as a war criminal, we have to understand him and give him some room. And I think that's what may happen um, with with these Republicans who are soft on, on Putin, that Thank they you. somehow forgive him. 
Thank you, Jay. I, uh, I'm sorry, we're out of time. So it looks like uh, we, we could do a little more here on this, maybe we'll return to it. But thank you for the participation and the insightful comments from both of you. And we will see you next week on this show the politics for the people. And I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll-Dalton, and appreciate your attention and viewing. Aloha, everybody.